As you travel along Lord Street in Southport, the first thing to spring to your mind would not be space travel, but if you continue on just a short distance, you will come to Birkdale and the parish church of St James. In 1943, a new vicar arrived, Marcus Morris. His arrival would set in motion the idea that would produce a boy's paper to influence a generation. Marcus and his wife Jessica soon settled into parish life, but Marcus was not happy with the parish magazine. He felt the Church of England was not getting the message across. He changed its name to Anvil, as he wanted to hammer out important issues of the day, but to do this it needed to be brightened up. A contact at the local newspaper told him of a young artist, Frank Hampson, who was attending the Southport School of Art and Crafts. Within a few months, Marcus began using Frank to illustrate more pages of Anvil, while pushing his idea of spreading the gospel in print. Marcus decided to take his idea to Fleet Street, but met with little success. While waiting for a train back from London, he took notice of the racks of comics on sale. He was shocked by the covers of those imported American comics full of sadistic violence and horror. I shall feel I have not done my duty as a vicar and father until I have seen on the market a genuinely popular children's comic. Well, adventure is once more the exciting business I remember as a boy, and so the seeds of Eagle were sown. Marcus and Frank first came up with Lex Christian, a chaplain working in London's East End. Other ideas came and went, when from May to September 1949, Dan Durr sprang from Frank Hampson's imagination. In a haze of smoke from his ever-present pipe, he quickly put together other ideas for the dummy issue of the comic. His wife is said to have given the name Eagle to the proposed comic after the lectern in the church. In later years, there have been other suggestions as to how it got its name. With a folder containing the dummy issue, Marcus entered the offices of Holton Press. It was his last call of the day, he explained the idea of the comic and left the folder with them, returning to Southport. A week after the visit, a telegram arrived at the vicarage. Definitely interested, do not approach any other publisher. With Holton's acceptance of Eagle, a studio had to be set up quickly. This was soon solved with a move to Churchtown, a suburb of Southport. The bakery in Botanic Road had two things going for it, a glass roof through which light poured, making it ideal for artists' work, and a peppercorn rent of 15 shillings a week. It also had bad things, rain as well as light came through the roof. Frank Hampson set up the day-to-day -day running of the studio and recruited other artists who would help spread the workload. The day started at 9 o'clock but rarely ended before 10 or 11 at night. The workload was horrendous and Frank Hampson refused to spur himself. Puffing on his pipe he believed he came alive when he drew and the more detailed he drew down there the more alive he became. While all this work was going on at the Botanic Road studio Marcus Morris was in London going over the contracts with Halton Press and it was at this time that he signed away the rights of the artists and his own rights to Eagle. Something which would come back in the future to haunt him and especially Frank Hampson. Issue 1 of Eagle went on sale Friday 14th of April 1950 and sold 900,000 copies. It soon became a regular race to the newsagents to find out what was happening to PC49, Riders of the Range, Harris Tweed, Tommy Walls but most of all the continuing adventure of Dan Durr, pilot of the future, and his bumbling sidekick Digby.
The bakery in Churchtown soon became inadequate for the continuation of Dander and the many other comic strips of Eagle. So, after five months, Holton found a new home for the Eagle Studios, at Bayford Lodge in Epsom, Surrey. The whole of the ground floor was given over for the studio. The upper story provided living accommodation for the Hampson family. Every Monday would be the photographic sessions. Frank worked principally from live action models. With the success of Eagle, Marcus Morris was asked to launch three more titles for Holton Press. Girl, 1951, Robin in 1953, and Swift in 1954. The popularity of Dan Durr became big business, with many games and toys being sold. None of the money from this merchandise would be seen by Frank Hampson, the creator of Dander. The glorious years of Eagle were about to change when in 1959 Holton Press was sold to Odoms. When the new owners saw how much the Dander strip cost to produce, they had little sympathy for Frank Hampson and they were looking for economies and Frank's studio was clearly one place to find them. Past services counted for nothing. Frank decided to give up the comic strip he loved. If he could not have Dan Durr completely, he didn't want him at all. Dan Durr would continue when Frank Bellamy took the job. With the loss of Dan Durr, Frank Hampson threw himself into his last great comic strip for Eagle, The Road of Courage. He left Eagle in 1961, having finally cut himself free, he said. Had I known what was going to happen, I would have called it Vulture. Frank Hampson was virtually in the wilderness and suffered a black depression. Oh well, yeah, I was very upset about the whole series of events that led to panic fright. Well, I tried to commit suicide, I had a nervous breakdown, I had a dreadful year afterwards trying to start to learn to draw again. But I got over it all right with the help of my wife and I'm fine now. Marcus Morris had the good fortune in 1964 to be made Managing Director and Editor-in-Chief of the National Magazine Company. He died in 1989. In 1970, Frank Hampson began suffering pains in the throat, diagnosed as cancer of the trachea. He recovered and was to receive some good news in 1975 when the Salon of Comics, Animation and Illustration in Lucca, Tuscany, awarded him the Prestigiosa Maestro as the best writer and artist of strip cartoons since the Second World War. In 1976 he was presented with a special award by the British Association of Comic Enthusiasts. Frank Hampson gave happiness to a generation, but it destroyed his health. Cancer and heart disease finally took his life in 1985. He was just 66 years old. The fans are still there for Eagle and Dan Durr. The Eagle Society has around 400 members and is celebrating 21 years of publication of the Eagle Times quarterly journal. The collector's market is big business with some Dan Durr toys selling for £2,280. Issue 1 of the Eagle comic sells for £250 to £800. In publishing, Eagle and Dan Durr have made a comeback with reprints and in 2009 a biography of Dan Durr is to be published. The future looks good for Eagle and Dan Durr and it's a tribute to Marcus Morris and the skill of Frank Hampson that made it all possible.